What's going on everyone? Uh, we're gonna see if hardware encoding is uh, gonna do us any better today than yesterday. Uh, it, it shows every now and then that we have an issue with uh, the, the buffering, uh, just the, the bit rate, which I have really great internet to be honest. Uh, so I know I'm not limited by my bandwidth. I think this is more or less just an optimization issue at this point. Uh, I have a 2700X in this system and whenever I do X.264 encoding, right, that's a that's a perfectly fine CPU. In fact, it's probably overkill for any kind of streaming that I do with a webcam, uh, but I still get issues uploading to YouTube for this live stream. So, um, a little curious as to how well hardware encoding will do. We're gonna use NVIDIA acceleration here. I have a 1070 Ti in the build. Um, by the way, if I sound terrible, if I sound too loud, too quiet, let me know up front. I'm watching the chat right now. Um, I also need to add the chat box to the live stream. So give me one second here. Pop out chat. And then go to the editor. Browse the source. Okay. Should be good now. I'm thinking it's fine now. Let me know if it's not, but I think it's good. Anyway, sorry about that in the beginning. Um, and yeah, that's what I'm thinking, Kryptonic. I'm not sure how well hardware encoding is going to do. I was thinking that if I was gaming, it wouldn't be ideal, right? Because then I just uh, then you're using the graphics card not only for pushing out those frames, but also for uh, you know actually encoding uh, the, the live stream. So I I don't know. We'll we'll see. I think it'll be fine either way, to be honest. But I just get tired of seeing the you know your stream might be buffering for some viewers notification that I get from YouTube, and it's just kind of a pain, you know. Anyway, what's going on, everyone? We have about 80 people watching up front. I appreciate you guys stopping by this uh, Sunday night or Monday morning, depending on where you live in the world. This is our 13th after hours stream. And uh, in these, it's pretty straightforward. You guys just ask me questions. I'm here to answer as many questions as I can. If I don't know the answer to the question that you're asking, I will do my best to research the topic and revisit it either in a dedicated video uh, or in the next after hours live stream that we have. Uh, and I'll actually start taking some notes soon um, so that I don't forget some of these questions. Because you guys have some good questions. And, and that's why I want to keep this going. Because you know, as long as I can as long as I can be here and, and have content, right, which is basically fulfilled by you guys, you guys are giving me the content uh, for these live streams, then I will continue making them. And I have a lot of fun talking to you guys. So uh, hopefully you stick around. I appreciate the 100 or so we have watching at this point. And uh, we're going to just jump on into it. Uh, I see right here Far Farhan Akhtar. I'm pretty sure I butchered that. <clears throat> Ryzen 2600 and 1170. Okay, I don't even I don't know anything about the 1170 yet, and I can't speak about the 1170 because I don't have clearance to do that. Uh, if that even exists, I wouldn't even know if it did. Okay, so I can't talk about the 1170. Um, if you're asking just strictly about the 2600 or the i5 8400, my uh, my preference would be toward the 2600 because I think that it's going to suit you better in the long run. The 8400 is a better gaming CPU, yes, but only marginally better. I don't think if you held two systems side by side, you're going to notice a difference between a 2600 and a 8400 when it comes to games, right? Basically any game for that matter. Uh, and on top of that, if you decide in the future you want to do more than just game, the 2600 is going to be the better bet for you. So uh, that's that's my recommendation. Again, if you just want to, you know, ball up on an i5, you can totally do that. You're actually going to have a better gaming experience uh, compared to your Ryzen counterparts. But is that marginally higher FPS beneficial in the long run, especially if you're thinking about limiting yourself to just games for the foreseeable future? Got to ask yourself that question. Uh, Bass Q3 for that $5 super chat. Have you considered doing super cheap used builds like Brian Tech yes, City does? Doesn't seem like many others are doing it. Yeah, and to be honest, like, you know, because Brian's so good at doing it already, and I've talked to Brian a lot. We were live streaming last night, um, and, and I think both of our live streams are archived on our respective channels, so check those out if you haven't already. We probably answered some pretty good questions in there. Um, and, you know, Brian's been doing this for so long, it, it's almost kind of... I'm almost afraid to do it because I feel like I'm going to do make some noob mistake. I'm going to buy something and spend more money than I should on it. And then you guys are going to be like, oh, Brian from Techia City did it like this and he did it much better. And I'm sure he's done it much better. So what I actually want to do is team up with Brian. Um, we might do something kind of like this in Taiwan. I'm not sure because uh, Computex is coming up next month. Uh, but I want to do something with Brian, you know, kind of hands-on. I really like the guy. He's really cool down to earth. Um, and he's straight up, you know, like he knows what a product's worth. He knows how to combine 
mine components that are really cheap and build these systems that are still extremely viable for very low prices. Uh, and uh, so I want to learn from the used PC parts master. Uh, so I don't want to take it on my own completely just yet. I've built a few used PCs, but I've never claimed them to be like the ultimate value PCs uh, just because I don't know the used market well enough yet. So uh, just... Uh, Something I'm, I'm looking forward to. I really am. And, and we're definitely in talks. Brian and I, Brian and I are in talks uh, about stuff like that. So we'll see what we get going here soon. Okay, uh, so I'm scrolling up here. I see some good. Let's see. What's your daily driver phone? This is from Caspidan with an underscore following his name for some odd reason. My daily driver, to be honest, is an iPhone SE. You're going to think that's really weird. I have another daily driver that I admittedly didn't pay for. It's the LG V30 that LG sent me direct. And I really like that phone for a totally different reason. But I think that the one thing I don't like about the V30 is that it's a little too big, right? So it's a basically like a six, in, it's a six inch screen on a five and a half inch body. Uh, well, you know, what a five and a half inch screen would be, right? For the, the full body size of the phone. And it's just too, it's too big. I, I don't like having to hold the phone with two hands to reach the upper left hand corner. Like with this right here, super simple. I can reach the top of the screen. I can reach both sides of the screen with my thumb just by holding it, you know, naturally where I normally do. And that's the, that's the phone size I like. I would compromise definitely on the bigger screen. My wallet's still in my pocket. I would compromise on the bigger screen for sure uh, for the sake of having something more compact yet still powerful. The iPhone SE is that for me. Comes with iMessage and all the goodies. I don't like tampering with my phone much anymore. Not like I used to in the good old days in high school. I was uh, always rooting my phones and flashing ROMs and all the good stuff. So yeah, it's uh, thanks Kryptonic. I appreciate that. It says Greg can't take the six inches. I mean, uh, <laughs> I really don't think there's any other way to word it. I just don't like the bigger phones. I, I prefer the, the stuff that's more compact. And uh, hopefully, you know, there's been rumors about the SE2, right? Having the almost full body screen, but in a much smaller form factor. The issue with that is the battery size. You can't fit a large battery into such a small phone. Um, and you would think that would be the Achilles heel of this, but the screen is, you know, it's pretty low res. Uh, it's not too bright. And, uh, you know, the, the CPU in here is pretty efficient for what it is. Oh, uh, iOS is pretty efficient. You know, these are all pretty low profile operating systems that Apple's using. Um, and that's why like the MacBooks typically have longer battery lives too, because the operating systems aren't utilizing as many resources, especially at idle. Okay, moving on. Uh, do you recommend overclocking the 8700K just for gaming? Jason Lin, of course I do. If you're going to buy an 8700K, I would... I would buy it with the overclocking intent in mind, like definitely. Um, you just gotta make sure you have a cooler to back it up. Get yourself a decent, you know, you spend 30, 40 bucks on a cooler, as long as it's not like a super low profile ITX cooler. Uh, tower coolers are great. They're super quiet in most cases, fairly easy to install. AIOs are gonna be quiet as well. In a different respect, you might hear the pump more than you hear the fans, which is kind of a, a weird sensation, uh, but they'll look very good. And uh, they're typically gonna cost a bit more than your average air cooler. so. You have to kind of weigh the pros and cons there and uh, move on from there. But I will say that the 8700K is definitely worth overclocking. I mean, why would you buy the 8700K if you're not going to overclock it? They have the 8700 if you aren't interested in that. And then you can pair it with a B360 board if you want to save some dough. Uh, just another way to look at it if you want. Chris Wheeler, what is the fastest graphics card for gaming? Uh, I would recommend... If, you, if you're just looking at like mainstream cards right now, the 1080 Ti is pretty much the best we got, unless you want to venture in a Titan territory, uh, which would ultimately end up costing you a thousand bucks, maybe more, because of how tight graphics card supply is still. Um, every now and then you find a pretty good deal, and that's when they get an influx of stock and they want it out quick. Uh, the 1070 Ti's are in stock right now. They are heavily in stock, and that's why they're pretty much priced as good as a 1080 right now. 1080's aren't, uh, excuse me, it's a 1070. 1070's aren't as much in stock yet because they were some of the best mega hash per watt cards to use for mining on NVIDIA's side. Uh, so the 1070 Ti's, which were right in production later, have kind of just been sitting in these warehouses and they're trying to get them out. And that, that, I think those are the better deals at this point, uh, unless you want to venture into the used market. Uh, critical with a one and a K, what's the best PC config that can run any game 90 plus FPS and 1080p? 
uh, depends on your in-game settings in 1080p, but I would say 1060 uh, or 1070 from NVIDIA. I wouldn't venture into RX territory right now because it's it's going to be very difficult to find those cards still. Uh, so give it a few more months before I, I recommend AMD cards fully for systems like these. Uh, so if you can find a second hand, maybe 780, 780 Ti, even 980 Ti for 300 bucks or so, it's going to be a little less efficient on power, uh, but you're going to save some money in the long run. And then maybe an i5 or an R5 CPU, depending on which way you lean, right, blue or red. Typically people have a preference, but if you don't have a preference, I recommend going with red. You won't be dissatisfied there and you'll be future-proof for quite a while. It's a word I don't take, or a phrase I don't take lightly, future-proofing. It gets overused a lot, but honestly, the argument for future-proofing is in AMD's hands right now. Okay, I am seeing... Iggy and Scorch asks what your current main gaming keyboard is. I am using a keyboard from uh, Cooler Master, actually. I have Cooler Master keyboards on all of my PCs. Uh, and these are, I want to say, let me see, Cooler Master, I want to say like Master Keys. Um, okay, so we have the Master Keys Pros. Those are, those are really good. Um, and then we also have trying to think of the other ones that, that, that we have. I know the one I'm using here isn't a Master Keys Pro. Let me see. I want to give you the, an exact answer, uh, answer here uh, because, okay, that's not coming up. Oh, great, great. Anyway, yeah, I'm not finding it in, oh, it's the wrong email, that's why. The, the Cooler Master Keyboard. Oh yeah, here we go. Okay. I'm seeing this, and I'm looking at the keyboards. Okay, we're about to launch a new keyboard. I'm literally going through my business email here trying to find it. In terms of the keyboard, okay, the Master Keys MK750s, those are the ones. So the MK750, I'm going to go ahead and link it. I'll find it on uh, Newegg here. Actually, I'll just do it on Amazon. MK750. All right. I'm gonna click on this bad boy. These are Cherry MX, uh, what are these? Cherry MX Browns? Yeah, these are Browns, which are a healthy medium. Uh, and why am I, that's weird. That's for some reason I've signed out of all this stuff. Okay. Ah, uh, geez. Copy and paste. There you go. And that's not affiliated or anything. You just click on it, and it'll take you to it. It's the US site, so you might have to change it to .de or .ca or wherever you live. Uh, but that is the keyboard that I'm using right now. On this PC, I love the palm rest. It's great. It's just magnetically attached. It doesn't clip in at all. You just slap it on there, and it stays. And I, I love that. It's very simplistic. And the RGB is uh, a little difficult to get used to, right, calibration-wise, but it looks great. OK, enough about keyboards. Here we go. Uh, Skrill, Skrilliton, Skrilliton, all right, sweet. Hey, Greg, I'm looking to stream in the near future. What process would you recommend from both blue and red team? Red team, at least an R5 CPU, 2600. You can even go back to first gen Ryzen, uh, Summit Ridge, 1600. You could probably get by with a 1500 or a 1400, but I would say a 1500X, uh, but I would try to keep it around six cores because you're going to want that extra headroom right for gaming as well and games are going to utilize around four cores on average uh, so if your cpu utilization is lower then you can stream at a higher bit rate especially if you're software encoding uh, so just keep that in mind um, and then on intel's side at least an i5 uh, and i would say at least a coffee lake i5 if you're going to stream with anything older than coffee lake try your best to get an i7. It, it will definitely help. And that's why Ryzen is such a great proposition right now because for the same price as a you know, four core, six core i5, you can get six cores and 12 threads with, with Ryzen. All right, okay. My friend, okay, it's, someone says, Paul Kwan says, is Ryzen 2 more compatible and stable with RAM because of the chip, because of the actual CPU, or the chipset, the 400 series? That's a good question, Paul. I have a feeling, because of the architecture, the, the jump, uh, I have a feeling it's got to do a little bit with both. I'm going to have to research that a bit more. Um, but I don't think the chipset has as much to do with it as the actual architecture of the CPU, because we did have a node change from Ryzen first gen to second. So um, I'm gonna lean a little more towards uh, the, the the chip itself, the CPU itself being more or less the cause, um, but I will do my research and get back to ya. 
All right. Uh, someone says uh, Nvidia encoding is the shit. Now it's so good. Does it look? Does it seriously look any better? I don't know if you guys can even tell. Um, but yeah, I am encoding right now with uh, NVM and C. So we will see how uh, how this stacks up. And I think what I'm gonna do is go back and look at both live streams, yesterday's and today's, and just see if I notice any artifacting with one or the other and kind of weigh those pros and cons. So if this looks great, you guys let me know. Um, that's a good idea. Uh, Paul, I'll definitely make a video on it when I do the research regarding that uh, question of yours, by the way. Okay. Uh, Chad Chua, if you're gonna ask me to answer your question, you should probably put the question in the comment that you're asking me to answer the question in, because I, I, don't, I don't see your question in the, in the chat right now. Um, I'm scrolling down, I'm scrolling down here. We have a F14 Flyer 7. How do you price older computers for resale? I'm trying to sell my old PC for roughly 330 or so, just don't know if that's a fair price to ask. Look, the only way you can really get an idea of what you should be asking is by looking elsewhere. The first place I go is eBay. Um, I check eBay for the same components that most of the time they're being resold, right? They're not new and you can actually, you know, narrow down your search inquiry by selecting only used components for resale. Um, type in your exact components, see what the average price is that these things are going for. Uh, and then I would kind of place my total system you know, sale value uh, somewhere in that range. So take the kind of the, the mean of each part price that you see on eBay for a used system, add all those prices together, and then, you know, kind of play up or down with it from there, depending on your exact market, because not all markets are the same. So you kind of have to play it by ear. You know, price it what you think you'd sell it for. If it's a little too cheap, uh, if, you're, if you have to sell a little too cheap to finally get people to, to start asking about it, then, you know, you might not want to sell it yet. Uh, so it really depends. Uh, let me see, let's see here. Uh, no, I'm reading some comments that are in ties to other questions. So thank you guys for doing that. I appreciate that. Uh, okay, Bland Paloma. Hey Greg, I wanna know your thoughts on how many years minimum you think you need to upgrade uh, your system. With all this specter and meltdown problem, I have a 6700K right now. He's asking when he thinks the upgrade will be needed. Um, and I don't think I would base my upgrade decision solely on Spectre and Meltdown. Um, like they have patches for those things. I would say if you noticed a huge, you know, performance cut when you had these Windows updates and all, all these software updates trying to cover up those patches uh, or those those flaws in the system uh, and the architecture. If you notice that those those things were crippling your system, then yeah, I might be pretty pissed off and I want to go buy something else. Uh, but it's I don't think that Spectre and Meltdown would justify my my personal upgrade path. I don't. I wouldn't. I wouldn't be. You know, unless it was like a totally like your system's completely vulnerable and you're getting just hacked. You know, like crazy. Your identity's getting stolen. All this crazy stuff. You know, if they, if you're experiencing that kind of stuff, obviously, it's a terrible issue. But you know, what we saw with Windows and and what we've seen with these uh, these uh, micro updates and BIOS updates is that this has pretty much been locked down. I wouldn't say it's a super pertinent issue in the sense that you're gonna, you know, lose your identity. Um, but if you're, I mean, you know, if you're worried about it, you have every right to be worried about it, it shouldn't have happened in the first place, um, then, you know, yeah, sure, update. But in general, updating a PC like that with a 6700K, I would say every three or four years. That's that's what I would, that's what I would say. Uh, on average, three to four years is a healthy upgrade, um, you know, kind of system every three or four. Lord Vile asks, Vive or a Rift? I am slightly biased because I first tested the Vive and uh, I tried the, um, what was it? I tried the Rift, the Oculus Rift at Best Buy and I thought it was cool. I didn't really notice much of a difference. The headset, I mean, it looked different, right? And I can really see pixels with the Vive. I really can see pixels. Like it, it's pretty obvious, but at the same time, it, it I'm more or less worried about feeling nauseous with that headset, and I don't feel nauseous when uh, when I wear the Oculus, or not the Oculus, when I wear the Vive. Um, it feels a little more comfortable to me. I like the controllers more from the Vive, um, and you know, I think the setup with the Vive is a little nicer. It's a little more friendly. Uh, you only need those like little two towers, right? And that's basically it. So I, I've had more experience with the Vive. And I think I stuck with the Vive because I was satisfied with it to begin with. I didn't feel the need to jump to the Rift uh, because I was already happy to begin with with what HTC had to offer. So, uh, unknown element, favorite keyboard, scroll back in the live stream. I answered that question. MK750 from Cooler Master. 
Uh, Max Edward asks, is YouTube your main job, Greg? Yes, it is. As of right now, it is my main job. Um, I will be finishing school pretty soon. And uh, and then from there, I'm not sure um, because I'll, I'll have an engineering degree and then I'll have my, my master's in business on top of that. And I would feel pretty dirty to not have to use those. I, I feel like, you know, I don't, I don't feel like they should be treated as fallbacks per se. Like if my YouTube channel suddenly died tomorrow, right, I would have something to fall back on. But I don't think that an engineering degree is just something to take that lightly uh, because it was hard work. I mean, it really was. Uh, and I was putting, you know, putting the channel together at the same time. So I, I really had no life my last three years in college. And with this, the MBA I'm doing online right now, it's a lot easier because I can kind of pace myself and work around my work schedule here on YouTube. Uh, but I've, I've often contemplated going back into just the regular workforce and you know it, you get benefits retirement insurance the good stuff uh and you don't get those things with youtube you, you don't i mean you got to do you know outside you got to do roth iras and and all kinds of other things if you want life insurance health insurance that stuff's expensive it ain't cheap here um it's not really cheap really anywhere unless you live in a socialist country and then you pay for it other way other ways so anyway uh Okay, I see Mr. M with current prices on PC parts, which is the better buy, laptop or desktop? I don't think that, you know, if you if you're asking yourself whether you should buy a desktop or a laptop, then you're probably not passionate enough to want to spend the extra money to get a desktop, a fully properly built desktop. So if you're asking that question, I would say just get a laptop. You're going to be happier with the money saved, um, and you can take it wherever you want. Uh, but I, I know, for one, that I would not be complacent with having just a gaming laptop. I would hate how loud they get. I would hate um, just how bulky a lot of them are. I don't like the screens on a lot of laptops. The keyboards are usually trash. Um, you know, you still got to bring peripherals with you. Like, uh, you still got to bring a mouse. If you're gaming with an Ultrabook, you got to bring the full-on GPU enclosure. You know, I, 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 just, I just find beauty in a desktop that sits on my desk as it should. Uh, and because I, I treat my PC builds like I do artwork. This is my art. I express it in this way. Uh, and then I use an Ultrabook for anything I need to do outside the office. Uh, and I have a MacBook specifically because I can still content create with the MacBook using Final Cut Pro and iMovie uh, with their built-in quick sync or equivalent functions, which is a much better way to edit on the go than with a Windows equivalent like Adobe Premiere Pro. Editing in Adobe Premiere Pro with a Dell XPS 13 or uh, you know a 13-inch Spectre X360 from HP or whatever, I, it's, it's so much worse. Um, so, and that's why I use a MacBook on the go. Uh, but I, I couldn't imagine carrying a bulky gaming laptop. I really couldn't. Uh, Dark Vader asks, are you enthusiastic? I think that's what you meant to say. Are you enthusiastic about Ryzen 7 Animator? I don't know if I should be or not. I know nothing about it. I don't really like to read rumors. I don't know enough about it to even be excited yet. But I'm sure it's going to be a pretty sweet step in the right direction. And uh, hopefully we, it's a much bigger jump than what we saw from you know, Ryzen's first gen to second gen. Uh, second gen improved a lot of things that needed to be improved, uh, but I, I don't think that the, the overall performance jump from the first gen to second gen was justifiable right for an upgrade. Um, and that's what we're looking for with the next stuff coming out, proper Ryzen 2 architecture. Uh, 14 flyers, F14 Flyer 7 asks, why don't you use Twitch to stream? Simple, because I don't have a lot of Twitch followers, and a lot of them aren't subscribed, or not subscribed, but they're not, like, they're not uh, signed up, you know, to receive notifications when I go live. They're not following me, basically. And uh, I have, what, 350-ish thousand subs here, so I pull a much bigger audience on YouTube. I could simultaneously stream to Twitch and YouTube, but I'd rather funnel it all in one way. I, you know, I think that... Uh, this is a this is a better format for what I do normally anyway. Okay, um, I see. I'm gonna go through quick super chats here. Levan Castillo donated two dollar to the super chat. Thank you for that. Your advice from your last live stream helped. Thank you. Awesome. I, um, I'm not sure what advice you're talking about, but I'm glad that you were. Uh, I'm glad that it helped you out. That's that's what these things are for. I try to. Uh, Fill in the gaps if you guys have any, and if I notice gaps in my own thinking or train of thought when you guys ask questions I don't know about, then it's just a motivation for me to go and uh, research the topic at hand. Uh, so we both get to learn. The People's Knee, that's a weird name, donated five Canadian. Thank you to that super chat. Ever considered doing an EDC video? 
Uh, thanks for the quality content as usual, and I'm totally gonna, totally gonna look that up because I don't know what the heck that is. EDC, Electric Daisy Carnival. Is is that is that what you mean by EDC? I feel terrible because I don't know what EDC is. I've never heard of that. Um, but sure, I mean, if I've got the opportunity, I'm sure I would. Drew B. Greg, how do I talk to a girl I like without being flirty? All right, look, my dude. Here, here's here's how it works. You want to talk, you guys, all, just all of you, just got to listen to this real quick, all right? As someone who is uh, newly married, okay, I would say I have just a tiny, just a tiny bit of experience in this, all right? And, and I'm not I'm not a lady killer. I can't pick up chicks whenever I want, you know? Like, we all have our flaws and the things that hold us back. But here's one thing that a woman definitely likes, and that's confidence, but not being so confident that you come off like an asshole, right? Yeah, there's a certain limit to that. You don't want to come off like this cocky dude who, you know, thinks he can get whatever he wants because then she's going to play hard to get if she even wants you to begin with. Uh, and then the other thing I would say is, you know, you want to plant seeds. You don't want to take a huge step up front and uh, make them think, you know, that's going to be so obvious that you're flirting that she's just, she's going to make up her mind right then and there. Should I give this guy my time of day or should I just, you know, ignore him? And if she chooses the latter, if she chooses to ignore you, you're going to have a huge uphill battle to climb after that. So what you got to do, what you, someone says you lie and pretend to be something you're not. Alistine, please do not do that. All right, the the real here's the real DL tip here, right? Plant the seeds, um, you know. Smile, don't don't act like you're this this hermit who's super shy. Um, you could totally play that if you really wanted. You could uh, you know, tell a girl she looks pretty, or tell her that it's nice to meet her. Smile, and then just walk away, right? And then you could be that stalker from a distance and see if she ever looks back at you again. Uh, but then you're leaving that you're leaving your fate with that you know significant other in her hands or his hands depending on how you're looking at this so it, if you're confident enough you don't have to do that if you're not as confident if you're a little on edge you're just you're just you know I'm not too sure yet if I can pick this chick up and and, and you know I, you don't want to come across too strong then just like I said plant the seeds compliment her give her one compliment and then walk away right and if she comes back up to you, and then she's interested. Now, if she doesn't come back up to you, then maybe that means you gotta give the seed a little water, okay? You gotta, you gotta soak it up a little bit. Walk back up to her, talk about something completely random. You wanna get her thinking about you. She's not gonna think about you if you say one word to her. You're gonna be another person that she sees in her day, and, and she's never gonna make a mental note or a mental image of your face, okay? Um, but you want your encounters to be kind of like stepping stones. They're the seeds that eventually sprout into this beautiful garden that you have to continuously water and work at to keep beautiful, uh, but you can't have a beautiful garden without planting the seeds. So the small steps up front matter. Be confident enough to, to compliment her, to talk to her in the first place, because if you don't talk to her, you're not gonna get anywhere with her, right? You know, you gotta be confident enough to do that. So, uh, <laughs> you guys are really taking this too <laughs> I'm reading some of your comments. I see it. Some of y'all are thinking the seeds thing's funny, but that, that's how I, I mean, I'm trying to use a metaphor, an analogy, because I, other than just shooting straight with you and telling you to man up and just walk up to her and talk to her, um, if you're just a little shy and you're not as confident, then you got to work at it one step at a time at your pace. Don't come across too uncomfortable. You can be a little giddy. You can act a little dumb. She might think that's cute. She might not. You got to feel it out. Um, you know, the, the seed might not eat any water at all, but you might have to soak the thing in water. Um, so you, you don't, you never know. Um, you, especially if you meet a girl for the first time, you've never met her before, you don't know how she is. If this is a girl you've, you've known for a long time and now you want to pick her up, then you probably have a good idea of what she likes and what she doesn't already and you already have an advantage. The, the disadvantage though is that she knows you too. She knows you as much as you know her. So she's already got this predisposition in your head about who you are and you have to convince her that you're dating material. So either way, uh, you're gonna have you're gonna have a, a struggle for sure. It's not gonna be easy. But if it was easy, it wouldn't, in my opinion, be fun. You're supposed to work at these things. Uh, that's that every relationship is just a work in progress. Even when you're married, that's when the real job begins. That's when it gets really tough. Um, and you know, you just gotta you just gotta be patient, and you gotta be diligent, and you gotta be confident. 
Forbidden Office Derby at Tech Yes City. How about you and Science Studio do a collaboration video? We talked about this in the beginning of the stream. I invite you to rewind the stream. You can always come back live later. I talked about that in the beginning. So uh, let uh, yeah, let me know what you, uh, what you hear if you have any other questions. Okay, I see Shun Shunar Shunarnar Banarnar. That's a lovely name. <laughs> I have an 8-core AMD FX processor running at about 4 gigahertz overclocked and hyper-threaded to 4 cores. Hyper-threaded to 4 cores. I'm confused. There's no hyper-threading. And technically, the FX 8-core CPUs are not 8-core CPUs. I've done like a full-on like, like just fabrication process breakdown of that architecture. You should watch that video. Type in like you know, FX processors, how many cores do they have? My video should be one of the first ones to come up. Go check it out. I talk about that breakdown. Um, but I'm not sure exactly where, where you're going with the hyper-threaded thing because you don't technically have hyper -thread. That's an Intel proprietary thing. Do you think I should go further with the overclock? If you can. If your temps allow you to go further and you're not pushing your voltage to insane levels, one point, I don't remember what it is for FX, but I would say 1.4 is usually like a, a pretty safe cutoff. Don't go above that in most cases, uh, then you're going to be fine with that overclock. Okay, Nand Vagasia. What is the difference between PSU and SMP, SMPs? PSU and SMPs. I don't, I, I don't know. It's kind of a weird question. I do not know what an SMP even is. I probably do. I've just never used it in its annotated form. Um, SMP. Symmetric multiprocessing, processing of programs by multiple processors that share a common operating system. Oh, it's okay. Symmetric multiprocessing. I don't know what <laughs> PSUs and SMPs are totally different. I don't know what you're trying to bring up from that question. You've asked that question quite a bit in this chat, but I don't know why you're asking it because it's they're totally different. A simple Google search could answer that question for you. Uh, does monitor hertz affect how many FPS it gives? Uh, what Fox? Yes, the answer is yes. Um, you need to watch refresh rate versus FPS. I have a video on that. You can type it in and then just put Science Studio after it. You'll find my video regarding the two. Refresh rate limits the amount of FPS you see. Um, FPS limits the, the, it doesn't limit your refresh rate on your screen, but the FPS is ultimately your, your that's your cap, right? No matter what, you're not gonna see more than your FPS, even if you have a higher refresh rate monitor than the frame rate you're receiving. You might even have stuttering because the refresh rates aren't synced up perfectly with your frame rates being called from the graphics card, and that's where you get stuttering and stuff. I also talk about that in a separate video. Um, but yeah, your refresh rate will limit it. So if you have a 60 hertz panel, and then your your graphics card wants to push 100 frames to your, to your screen, you're only gonna see 60 max. Um, basically. Uh, okay. We have, can you speak fluent German? No. Uh, I cannot speak fluent German. I actually can't even, oh, I see. You guys are saying he means SMPS or SP, SPMS. You spelled it wrong, Cybershark. SMPS. You guys are confusing the heck out of me. Um, let's see. Switched mode power supply. Electric circuit converts power using Switching devices that are turned on and off at high frequencies. I've never even heard of it, so I can't answer your question, but I will research it. Um, I, I've never heard of SMPS ever, so that's new for me. Uh, okay, I saw something about... Where am I going to scroll up here? I was reading something, and, I'm, and I lost it. I lost it. Uh, Dark Vader, what's your favorite PC case brand? I already told you. My favorite PC case is the PC, Lee, PC uh, 011 Dynamic from Lee and Lee. Uh, another favorite case is the Meshify C. Again, I have videos on both of those. Okay, uh, Ronnie asks, if the megahertz of your, let me see here, if the megahertz of your CP rises to cold, rises to cold, should the video card be paired to the RAM squared? Yeah, the answer is yes. 2200G thoughts from Nico. I think it's a great uh, ultra budget value proposition. I've tested them. I don't have results on the channel yet because I, I was kind of late to the party. Um, AMD sent those pretty late. So, um, yeah, I think they're viable. I think the 2400G has definitely a, it definitely has a place. The 2200G still has a place, but it, I, I don't know. It's, it's, it's sometimes it's not enough. Um, I'll leave it at that. But you guys know, if you see benchmarks anywhere, you, you know the difference between the two and the value implied with both. Cypress asks, so I took off the thermal paste on my CPU and replaced it with, 
<laughs> okay, that's a hide on the channel. Techie yes, City, hey Greg, what's the difference between an SMG and a P yes, you <laughs> What's going on, Brian? Oh, geez. Oh, that's good. <laughs> I've never, I've never heard of an SMPS. I never have until this point. So I'm actually curious. A switch mode power supply. It's kind of an interesting topic, but I don't know enough about it to even comment on it. So we will see. We will see. Uh, someone asked what my ethnicity is. I am Hispanic. Um, okay, Ronnie. No, I, I know, I know you were kidding, Ronnie. I, I know you were kidding. It's all good. Don't worry. Uh, the deranged gamer. Hey, will a 300 watt power supply be enough for a 1060? i 560 412 gigs of ddr3 cutting it awfully close uh you're probably going to be in your safe zone but in the upper edge 300 watts is like that's that's very low i would try i would try to get something bigger than that because you you might you might not have enough i'm not sure exactly what the 1060 pulls under load but i imagine it's going to be over 100 watts uh probably closer to 150 just off the top of my head you know, 6400 is going to pull around 70, 80 uh, at, you know, peak spikes right under load. So you're already pretty close to your threshold. Um, I would I would say you're probably safe, but going for a 400 watt power supply is going to set you up that much better. A 400 or 430 watt power supply is, is perfect for that build if you're just looking for something that's low profile and not too expensive. Um, okay, yeah, scroll on back up to... All caps is pissed because I didn't answer his question, but he doesn't realize that there's like 50 other people asking questions. He thinks he's entitled to have his question answered over everyone else. So he left, I guess. I'm so sorry, all caps. I'm sorry that you're not the only one in the chat. Thankfully, you guys are uh, patient. I'm trying to get through all this stuff, except for all caps. He's not patient. Tech City, I will confirm this at Computex. All right. He's going to confirm it. You guys need to catch up on the on the inside scoop going on in there. All right, we have about 370 people watching. Not bad for a Sunday night. You guys are awesome. Uh, we have a lot of, let's see. You're sitting in the SL2000, right? What's your height, weight? I'm about 5'9", 5'10", 130, 140 pounds or so. I'm a pretty small guy. This fits perfect for me, for my frame. I need a smaller frame, so this is great for that. If you want the bigger chair, you can go for something bigger than the SL2000. The great thing is Vertigear has many options, uh, but this chair is extremely comfortable. My Nova, it's not 1130 where I live. You're not the only time zone. So for some people, like people on the West Coast, it's only 8.30 p.m. Huh? Huh? Uh, see? That's how time zones work. DBNX1701, what are your thoughts on net neutrality? I literally have a video talking about net neutrality. So just type in net neutrality science studio. There's your answer to that question. Hey, there's Chris Katzer. Vertigear is awesome, but Chris is totally not biased. I'm totally not. It's all good. Trucker Bomb, thanks for reminding me about the Discord questions. Thank you for that good saw. Okay, all right, all right. Uh, oddball, asking me to mod you. I don't see you, Oddball. Where are you? Um... Someone's asking why I have Christmas lights still up. Don't be a hater. I like Christmas lights. They're good all all year round. Cyber Shark, it's not Monday where I live. It's still Sunday night, so ha. Uh, we have a couple questions here I want to answer from the Discord. If you guys want to join the Discord, it is open. Uh, you can do so. It's linked in like my most recent videos. It's, it's linked down there. Actually, Brian from Tech Yesterday and I both share that Discord, uh, and we do have special rules for sponsors if you're a YouTube sponsor or if you're a Patreon supporter for both of our channels as well, and you do have like certain hierarchies and distinctions in the Discord for those special uh, supporters. So if you want to ask questions via Discord, you can certainly do that as well. It's less cluttered right now than the, the live stream is, or the live chat in particular. Okay, so Beta2017 asks, are you and Linus on good terms? If so, have you brought up a collab idea? I have. I, I met Linus. I didn't say a single word to him, I don't think. I met him last year at Computex. Jacob McLovin talked to, to Linus. Uh, it was about, they were talking about phones or something. Um, but I haven't said a single word to Linus ever, so I don't even know. I don't know. I'm sure he has some kind of impression of me if he even knows I exist. Um, I would be totally down for anything like that, but I don't think he's going to ask a channel my size to do anything with him. It's just... The the uh, the you know the inequivalencies there with like the PR it's just gonna benefit me way more than it would ever benefit him so I don't blame him for not doing something like that. Okay, T bomb. What's your opinion on all male bathhouses? Interesting question. Um, hmm. 
I, I mean, it depends. Like, are you confident in yourself? Are you a confident male? Do you have masculinity? How would people approach this? I don't know. I'm just trying to, like, throw out some questions here to respond to your question. Um, I'm pretty, I mean, I don't, uh, all male bathhouses, kind of weird on the surface. Not sure if I would just be cool with, like, walking in on one. I don't know. What do you guys think? Let me know in the chat box. Uh, okay, I see Forbidden Office Derby. Honestly, I think it's a very underrated channel. Please keep up the fantastic content. Much appreciated, my dude. I really appreciate that. Okay, ZTG Gaming. A good question. Yo, Fallout 4 isn't using all my system resources at 720p lowest settings with an i5-6400, 750Ti, 12 gigs of VRAM. I get 30 FPS and my GPU is only at 20%. My CPU sits around 50%. Please help. Uh, you're gaming at a really low resolution, and a, well, I mean, relatively speaking, and you're gaming at a very low in-game setting. So you're putting a lot of stress, I imagine, on your CPU. Again, not sure why your CPU is only maxed at like 50%. It might have to do with optimization. Uh, but Fallout 4 is not. I'm pretty sure Fallout 4 uses more than two cores effectively. I don't know, you guys let me know. I've never benchmarked Fallout 4. So that would be where I would... Uh, have to ask the question. Anyway, Cody Select, what's going on? Thanks, Cody, for uh, sponsoring us. I see Trucker Bomb, aka T Bomb, in Discord. I see him in here. I see Oddball. Now I see him. I am making you a moderator. Oddball is uh, one of our admins in the Discord server. Again, if you'd like to join that, you can check out the last couple of videos in the description. We have a link to the Discord shared between Tech ES City and I. Uh, okay, I scrolled down to. Ba -ba 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 -ba. Looking for the good stuff. Drago, Dra Drago Fang 1060 says, Fallout 4 pushes my system to its limits, not the CPU or GPU, but my hard disk drive. <laughs> so it might just be an optimization issue. Um, I would suggest bumping your in-game settings. You certainly can do that with your configuration. Whoever asked that question earlier about Fallout 4. Uh, okay. Bezel asks, do you ever find it hard to be in between RGB softwares? I'm confused. And to be in between RGB software, you mean like to use multiple programs to control different RGB things? I'm I'm kind of confused as to what you're asking. Um, I like the I like the one that like just lets you combine everything. Corsair has a software like that. Um, I'm pretty sure Thermal Take is coming out with software like that. If they haven't already released it, we covered something similar to that at CES this year. Um, so any software that can unify multiple platforms or multiple products from different companies, I'm all for it because I hate having five or six different RGB programs on my desktop. Just big waste of time. Um, okay. Let's see here. Yeah. All right. The question from Calm. Calm. Oh, I missed. I lost it. Oh, oh God. Oh, I lost it. Here we go. Cal Traveler. This is good. Calm Traveler. Uh, his question is, with a horizontal motherboard, okay, so turn long ways, I guess, and two rads in the top, okay, how important is tipping the case every which way? I'm confused. It would depend on where your radiators, like where your tubing runs come from the radiator, where your ports are. Uh, so what I've experienced is that if you have a radiator that sits upright, right, and your ports on the radiator are the highest point in your system, it's going to be a pain to get those air pockets out. You're going to flip your case upside down and then upside down again, all the while keeping your pump on, preferably, because it'll accelerate those air bubbles being pushed through the loop. You want to get those into your reservoir. And if your reservoir is at a lower point in your system than the top of your rad is where those ports are, then you're going to have some gaps. You might even have air just kind of hang out in the tubes up top uh, when you, especially when you turn your system off uh, you know when you're when you're the pressure in the whole loop isn't equalized so I, i'm not sure uh, what your orientation specifically is is beckoning but uh, you'll probably have to flip your case around more than once just because that's custom loops yeah like if you want to have a fully primed system you've got to flip the thing around that's just how it is uh, Noggin for that two dollar super chat. I'm using IC Graphite Pad on my CPU. Opinions? IC Graphite. Oh, you're using the pad. Yeah. Uh, I want to know about this. Uh, I saw this. I think it was Linus or somebody who did this video, and I was really curious about it because I've done a thermal pad before, like just a pad you put over like uh, you know VRAM modules or whatever, um, and those aren't the greatest. Obviously, they're just not meant for the, the same kind of heat transfer. So. I'm curious uh, how effective this thing actually is, if it's better or worse 
than, uh, than just typical thermal paste. I imagine it's got to be pretty sweet because it's like the new hype thing right now. So we'll see. I might buy one. And uh, can you even buy one? Are they out right now? Let's see if I can get my hands on one. And I'll test it out because it looks pretty sweet. It looks pretty cool. Um, it looks like it's a perfect size for a Ryzen IHS. So, and it's reusable. Interesting. Okay. Uh, someone asked, Rusty Shackelford, Greg, how is Will doing? Haven't heard from him in a while. Uh, Will is in Discord all the time. So if you want to join the public Discord, you can do that. And you can talk to Will directly. Just at not Will. That's his name, not Will. But it's actually Will. Uh, so if you want to bother him on there, you can certainly do that. It would be pretty funny to watch. So <laughs> just give him crap. Nathan Trin, are GPU prices dropping? Nathan, you you can figure this out just as quickly as I can. Just Google this stuff and Amazon, Newegg, look at graphics card prices. I think we can safely say they're coming down. Are they back to where they should be? No, they're kind of around MSRP right now. Um, they should be dropping a little lower. We've been on the same Pascal architecture now for, what, two years almost? So, um, yeah, they should be lower than MSRP. But right now, they're much better than what they used to be, right, about six months or so ago. Okay, uh, by the way, Noggin, thank you for that super chat. And I thank you for that recommendation because uh, it looks pretty sweet. Uh, I, I can't wait to test this pad. Honestly, it just, it, it's something that I think sh it's so like blatantly obvious that it should have existed a long time ago that now that it's suddenly becoming a thing, uh, worth testing. Graphite thermal pad. Interesting. Muy interesante. Uh, okay. Uh, Bashzer Zero asks, Science Studio, did you end up using the LG 43 inch monitor? I don't have a 43-inch monitor. I've never had a 43-inch monitor, so I don't know what you're referring to. But uh, I use 27-inch monitors typically, 1440p at around 144, 165 hertz. I have a 100 hertz 1340 by 1440, uh, 13, no, 3440 by 1440, 100 hertz panel uh, in the other room. That's a VA panel, ultra wide. And then I have two 240 hertz panels here from BenQ, and we have a dedicated video on those as well if you're interested. Scrolling, 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 scrolling. I'm scrolling. Uh, what you think of Battlefield 5 coming out soon? Honestly, never really been a huge fan of Battlefield. That was more was I was always more of a Call of Duty gamer. Uh, but that was when consoles were like it, that was my thing was playing on consoles. I used PCs for other stuff, but not necessarily games. I never had a really powerful gaming PC, so I never really found the urge to do that. Uh, but Battlefield 5, I don't know. I mean, I played Battlefield. What, was it a uh, Battlefield 1, what's the, the new one? I, I'm, I got a brain fart. Uh, but the latest one that came out, right, based on World War... Oh, jeez. World War 1? I, I think it was World War 1. I'm, I'm out of the loop. Anyway, that tells you how much I know about Battlefield. Uh, I, I've just, I haven't been as big a fan of it as I have Call of Duty just because I grew up playing Call of Duty. So, you know, I was, I was groomed that way. Uh, but in, with respect to Black Ops 4, I don't think it's going to do very well. I really don't. I think they're I think they're too late to the battle royale game. So, we'll see. Okay, Jarrett Hutt Huddleston. I started overclocking my GPU and did all my stress testing with Firmark, and it was stable on Firmark when I tested more than 20 minutes. I feel like I read that out of context. Totally read that out of context. Thanks for that's not a question. Okay, anyway. Andrew Lott, do you think the price of B350 boards will go down after B450 comes out? And if so, will they be the budget sweet spot or or will you be missing out on future compatibility or worthwhile features? I mean, that the features part, you can figure out in five seconds by looking at the comparisons when B450 is available. Uh, but right now, B350 is still perfectly fine. And with regards to the other part of your question with price, I think B350 is already priced super competitively. I don't expect prices to fall much more, not in the new market. In the used market, sure. I think we'll find plenty of B350 boards in the used market. Motherboards are pretty good most of the time to buy secondhand. Just, you know, double check up front, uh, especially if you're buying an Intel board that the pins are good. Ask for a picture specifically of the, of the socket uh, and then preferably of the system working with the motherboard. And then that's, that's, that's key, you know. You can do that too with the CPU. Um, but that, that's what I would say. Uh, Richard Meadows, uh, don't look at the Discord link. The Discord link is in my actual videos. Don't check like the Q&A. The, the Q&A we just do last minute, but check my actual videos, my, my recent videos. Discord link is in there. Uh, okay, Siege says you should try it again. COD will always do well. I don't think COD, I, COD's definitely dead on PC. I would safely say that. I think the only people playing, like I, I downloaded Modern Warfare 2 and played that and it's very, it's, it's cool. 
the remastered stuff might rejuvenate things, especially for the older school games like Modern Warfare and, and Black Ops, the original Black Ops. Uh, but I don't think Call of Duty has a, a, a big place anymore on PC because the trends on PC shift so quickly. Um, so that, that's just my take on it. Okay, can you plug SATA 1 into a SATA 2 port? SATA 1 into SATA 2. Um, I'm confused as to what you're talking. Are you talking about just like switching up your ports, like having an a, you know an SSD plugged into one port and then switching it and plugging it to the second port? Usually your BIOS and new motherboard is pretty smart about figuring out which drives your boot drive. Um, I'm not sure what you're talking about there. Though. You can run like a SATA 3 and a SATA 6. Like 6, you're talking about like 3 megabytes per, uh, or gigabytes per, I don't know. I'm kind of confused as to what you're asking. Um, kind of an open-ended question. Okay, here we go. Uh, Pack Army ISI. How much first gen X5650 or eighth gen like 8600K in gaming and working? Oh, what's the difference between the first gen and the eighth gen, right? Because they're at six four. Okay, uh, that's an interesting question. The 5650, that sounds like a question for Brian. If Brian's still watching, you should definitely ask Brian that question because I haven't actually personally tested the 5650. Uh, but I'm sure there's not a huge difference. I'm sure that, if anything, it's probably, I would say, between clock for clock, maybe a 20%, 25% difference with most games frame rate-wise. Uh, you're limited by other things as well, like your ram and uh a few other things but in most cases from the first gen intel stuff like we're talking like you know i7 uh first gen uh to right the 8000 series i7 i think that there's going to be about a 30 or 20 to 30 percent delta in frame rates is my thing uh mark davenport we talked about scd key in the last live stream so click on the last live stream um on my half, it's it's after hours number twelve. We talk about SCD keys specifically there. I don't want to go through all that again. Um, but I no, if if I believe that they were money laundering, I would not have promoted them. It's a, the idea that they are is and that I think that they are is absurd. So whoever planted that day, that idea in your mind is I don't know why they're saying that. Uh, the gamer Greg, I believe you will be going to Taiwan for Combi Tech. So the question: Would you try to do comparison between Intel Hades Canyon and small form factor computer? I, I'm not going to get my hands on Hades Canyon more than likely, so I don't know why me going to Computex would be grounds for testing that stuff. Uh, but yeah, I will be going to, to Taiwan. Uh, I'm actually flying to Switzerland. Uh, I'm going to see Lisa uh, in Germany for about a week, and then we're flying to Taiwan together, and then we're coming back for about another four or five days, and then we'll be back home. Um, but yeah. Uh, Techia City, Brian says, I noticed basically no difference once overclocked versus an 8400 and a Ryzen 5 2600 with a 1080 Ti. Yeah, and that's more than likely because the, um, well, I, I wonder what Brian was testing and I think he was, oh, overclocked the 5650 and it goes so hard. <laughs> that's what I was looking for. I was looking for that one. Um, yeah, and th the reason why with my testing, I used a 1070 Ti instead of a 1080 Ti for the i5 versus R5 question uh, is because I don't think many people are going to buy an i5 8400 and then buy a 1080 Ti. Like to me, that just doesn't make much sense. So I try to scale the graphics card with the price of the CPU in most cases. Okay, uh, Noggin, $2. It's on my 8600K temps are worse idle than on load that's super weird that sounds like it sounds like a software issue i would say um gary Stanley, yeah he's okay so he was talking about sata one literally sata one and sata two and sata three um so sata three 60 gigabits per second um and that's what you're gonna have on most modern boards sata two is three gigs that that's back i would say uh off the top of my head lj 775 territory so if you're if you're back on you know q6600 stuff you're gonna be sata two um, and but you can run a SATA two. You you can they're usually backwards compatible. You're just gonna be limited more or less by the SATA interface itself. It's gonna be your limiting factor. Um, so stepping down isn't a problem. Jake Mart, hey, I would just like to take a second. To thank you. I've been a fan for almost a year now. You bring so much joy to not only me but my family as well. So thank you very much. Keep up the good work. Wow, I appreciate that, Jake. I don't know uh, what I exactly said to bring you joy to your family, but that's awesome. That's uh, that's definitely needed. I appreciate that. Uh, Seal Freddy 5. Have you ever done a build in a Case Labs case like the Mercury S8? No, I have not. I don't have a Case Labs, uh, I don't have a Case Labs contact, uh, and at this point, like, if I, if I really feel like I need to build in something, I'll just buy the case, um, but I, I don't think, 
most of my builds, I like the compact stuff, like the super compact cases, like the Meshify C. Um, the case labs cases tend to be a bit bigger, so I'd have to have a really extravagant build to fill up all that extra space uh, in a bigger case labs case. So uh, it would be a really big and daunting water cooling project in the works. Uh, let's see. I, I, Bo Jangles, what's up, Bo? While you're gone to Computex, I'll drive your car around and make sure nothing rots from sitting. Uh, I got you there, though. Fuel stabilizer. Literally added today, so good game. Bo really tried. <laughs> anyway, Bo, you should come over before I leave. Uh, so if you're free, I know you work Monday through Friday most of the time, but if you find a free afternoon or whatever, stop by. Let's chill out, play some PUBG or something. Uh, okay. Bird asks, what case would you love to build in? Um... Yeah, I don't know yet. I've built in pretty much any case that I've that I've seen that like I'm like I gotta have it. I gotta build in that. I love the S340 Elite. I love the H440. Uh, or not the H4. I love the H700i. Uh, I love the Meshify C, Define C, the Define R6. I love the Fantex P400. I love the PCO11 Dynamic. Those are some of the cases off the top of my head that I really love building in. I can't think of anything else that I like I haven't built in yet that I would love to though. Um, maybe maybe like a cool in-win case, like a really uh, just, you know, out there, crazy looking case. I know Cougar has a case like that. A lot of the bigger tech tubers did builds in those. Um, but, and I, I think Cougar actually spawned, I'm, I'm pretty sure they paid them to use those cases. I don't know. And they might have, but a lot of them use it at the same time. So unless they just pushed them and just, you know, said here, if you want to build in and build in it, I don't blame them. Um, but, uh, I was just, I just found it weird that so many of them were building in at the same time. Um, that case looks really cool. And so, yeah, I would say a case like that, that's like just super weird. The deep cool uh, quad stellar is a super weird case. I can't wait to build in that. We're waiting on some of Will's components before we do. But yeah, that would be pretty sweet as well. Uh, okay. Coalition Gaming says, wait, Brian's here? Yeah, Brian's here. He's in the chat. You got to check him out. He's actually answered some questions too. Questions that he's more fit to answer anyway regarding use parts especially. Uh, Zapod Beeblebrox donated a $10 to the super chat. Gaming only Ryzen 1800X rig 280mm AIO. Does it make sense to run my AIO on my GPU as a 1080 blower versus my CPU considering the minimal overclocking headroom? H7 on CPU does just fine at 1.35. Yeah, um, yeah. if you have a 1080 blower, I think that would be so much more annoying than not being able to overclock my 1800X, which is going to be capped more or less anyway to about 4 gigahertz. Um, yeah, if, you, if you're willing to buy like a G12 crack and bracket or something from NZXT, um, mounted H15, uh, cooler to it. Actually, is that still an Ace Tech pump? I don't know if it's an Ace Tech pump. Uh, I actually don't think it is. I don't think it's compatible. We'll see. Somebody will know in the chat. Check the chat. Uh, but I haven't actually tested the H15, H115 yet, so you have to see about that. But uh, yeah, in general, I would feel more comfortable water cooling my graphics card and just sticking an H7, you know, from Cryo Rig on there because it's going to do just fine. I'm actually using an H7 Quad Lumi for my 8700K, so there's something. Okay, scrolling down, scrolling down, scrolling down. Uh, Greg, does Computex hold a special meaning to you? Now, it definitely does. I talk about this with Lisa all the time because that's where I met her. Um, and I went to Computex expecting to be totally, you know, synced into business, just focusing on videos. Um, it was a business trip, literally. I mean, we were having fun there at the same time. I've never been on that side of the world, but I met Lisa there. Um, for those of you who don't know, Lisa is my wife now. Um, and she... Uh, she definitely made it much more enjoyable. And it's going to be really cool going back with her this time because it's actually like around the time that we met. So uh, it's kind of like our one-year meeting anniversary. We just got married. So we've known each other for about a year. I didn't waste any time. I knew she was the one. And uh, we got engaged and we got married. And uh, right now we're apart because she's German and I'm a U.S. citizen. So there's that struggle ahead uh, we're working on that right now she's getting her name changed and all the good stuff and then we will be uh we'll be trucking away okay um i see oddball oddball's asking me go check out the steam link app steam link app i i'll do that in a separate video i don't want to do that on a live stream um richard meadows have to look for ryzen 2 series compatible sticker for B350 compatibility, I paid a shop to update BIOS <clears throat> excuse me, on mine for 2200G. Or you could just see if AMD will send you one of those BIOS upgrade kits. They'll send you like a dud CPU to let you boot into your BIOS. Uh, so if you want to do something like that too, you could do that and not have to worry about whether or not there's a you know Ryzen 2 series branding on B350 boards, which that's going to be tough to find. There's going to be very few B350 boards out there that are going to openly support Ryzen 2 out of the box with the updated UEFIs. 
Uh, Shahir McKenzie asks, Greg, is a 60 hertz ul- is a 60 hertz ultra wide worth it? No G sync or free sync. I think 60 hertz anything is a compromise. Even if you're going for a 4K display, yeah, it's going to look super sweet. You're going to have a really high you know pixel per inch density, uh, but I, I hate 60 hertz now. I'm I'm on a 240 hertz panel, and when I go from a 240 hertz panel to a 165 hertz panel right next to me, I can see the difference. And then when I go from 165 hertz panel to my 100 hertz panel in the other room, I see an even bigger difference. And then I go from 100 hertz to 60 hertz, and it literally hurts my eyes. Uh, so when you get used to the to something higher than 60 hertz, it's really hard to go back down. If you've been used to 60 hertz for a long time, then I strongly recommend foregoing an ultra wide format for something that's got a higher refresh rate. If even if you have to stick with 1080p, go for a 1080p 120 or 140 hertz panel. It will make a huge difference. I guarantee it. I think it'll be much better than an ultra wide uh, aspect ratio. Brentars Gaming. Greg, is there a reason why whenever I update my graphics driver, my third monitor gets all screwy and I have to do a lot of resolution scaling to fix it? Also, where do babies come from? <laughs> you guys are good. I'll give you that. You guys are pretty good. Uh, so to answer your first question, which is where I will keep this uh, th- this discussion, <laughs> I think you know where babies come from, that would be uh, probably... It- it's... It might be a conflict between Windows display settings and your NVIDIA display settings, assuming you're using an NVIDIA card uh, or if you're using you know, AMD, Crimson, Relive drivers, whatever their newest driver is. Um, it, it could be just be a conflict between the control panel from NVIDIA or uh, the Windows display settings right? when you right-click on your desktop. So I would double-check both of those. Make sure they're lined up because if they're conflicting at all, then yeah, it might mess up your third your third screen especially. Setting up three screens is a lot more painful than setting up two uh, just because you have that third variable and you will have conflicts. you got to set all your windows up to where they scale appropriately. Um, but I wouldn't worry too much about it. Uh, yeah, McLovin passed away, Rip. <laughs> oh, Brian, where did that come from? <laughs> oh, jeez. Oh, man, that's pretty good. Um, okay, I have Taven Albison. Totally butchered that, but anyway. Hey, do you think it would be cool to build an AMD Ryzen system with a 2200G with an RX 480 and the Corsair Bulldog 16 gigs of 3200 RAM? Why would you want a 2200G with an RX 480? Do you want to try to do? Uh, I don't know exactly what you're trying to do. I mean. I'm not even sure whether or not, you know how you could do with the old school stuff, with the old school APUs, like the A10 APUs, you could uh, you could crossfire that with the you know R9 270 and whatnot. I don't even know if you can do that with the newer stuff. If you can't do it, don't buy the 2200G, it's completely pointless. Um, but I, I would try to pair the 480 with at least an R5. Try to scrape out the extra for an R5, um, but it, you got the right idea though, going for the higher frequency RAM. Just make sure that RAM is gonna actually be compatible, right? You're not gonna have issues getting to that frequency with Ryzen first gen. Summit Ridge is a pain when it comes to RAM. Second gen Ryzen, totally clear that up. XMP profile, boom, it's all ready to go. Much better, basically like Intel at this point. Uh, okay, Taurus, Taurus Brain, Taurus Brain asks, at Science Studio, ever thought about working for a computer company? If so, which one? Um, I've don't even I think I put in an application for a Corsair position just at one point just to just to like see just to mess around um, and I don't I didn't get anything back from them they probably they probably think it's a conflict of interest and I wouldn't blame them um, so I think it would be contingent if I ever wanted to work with the with a particular let's say I wanted to work at NZXT I would have to be very careful with especially my case reviews. Um, and any sponsored build in general, I think there would be a very blatant and open conflict of interest. Yeah, plenty of people work in the industry and have YouTube channels. They've done it before, uh, but I, I just feel like it would compromise a few. I, I feel like a few people would look at it as like a compromise, um, especially when it comes to case reviews. And I value case reviews. I think you know we have a, a certain way of doing things with cases when it comes to putting those videos together, those builds together, those reviews together. Um, and I, I, I'm just not sure I'm willing to, to give that up or cut into my credibility when it comes to that by working with a company that I often work with anyway on the side. So not, not, I'm not sure. You guys might feel different about it, but uh, anyway. Okay, watch it. Ask Greg, suggest, a, suggest me a 
a, a best air cooler for my Ryzen 5 1400 if it's hitting 50 degrees on idle. Uh, check your thermal paste. Make sure your, your cooler's mounted properly because it shouldn't be idling at 50. You probably have some trash thermal paste or your fans are not moving or something. Um, but there's no best air cooler. If you want, like, you want like the most expensive air cooler, that'll be one of the best out there. What do you mean best? You need to get something that's in your price range. Um, I would say uh, Hyper 212 Evo, uh, CryoRig H7. Make sure it's compatible with the AM4 socket. Uh, those are going to be perfectly fine. Anything with like 150 watt ish TDP or higher is going to be perfectly fine for you. Okay, a couple more questions. We've been going at this for about an hour or so. Uh, we did live stream yesterday. I live streamed with Brian on his channel first and then my channel second. So you can check out our respective channels if you want to get caught up on the good stuff between Brian and I. Brian's a really cool dude. Uh, Alex David asked Greg, opinions on the NVIDIA GTX 1100. I know nothing about it. I know, and I'm pretty sure you meant like 1180 or 1170. I don't know anything about the GTX 11 series. So you'll have to wait until NVIDIA says something. And even if I did know something about it, I couldn't tell you about it. That's just how a lot of this stuff works. Um, I wish I could tell you, but I don't know enough about it blatantly to even give you some context clues. I don't do, you know, digging into rumors and stuff. Uh, Andrew Lott, why do CPUs with the same architecture have different single core performance? Uh, that is because not all, not all wafers are manufactured with the same precision. There are always degrees of error. Uh, and a lot of them, like what, what AMD does, uh, especially if we look at AMD because they have higher core count tiers for their consumer grade stuff. But if uh, you know a particular, uh, you know if a particular wafer has a few imperfections, then those eight core chips, right, or what would be eight core chips, end up becoming six core chips or four core chips because they disable some of those some of those cores uh, when they're not up to spec when they don't meet a certain standard that's literally binning um, and i have a video talking about all that in uh in a dedicated what's a dedicated video you can check it out just type in like cpu binning science studio there you go it'll answer everything for you in that video with regards to that question hopefully uh, a couple more questions here a couple more give me some good stuff give me some good stuff mr og gamer i don't know anything about the gtx 1170 so don't ask me about it i can't even talk i couldn't talk about it even if i knew anything about it because it's it would be under nda uh, Matthew Smalley. Sorry, I got to know before we ordered parts. Uh, I feel like I read that out of context. Yep, certainly did. I should probably read these beforehand. Um, <laughs> I love seeing Walter White in the chat. This is great. You guys know I've built Walter White PCs, Walter White trivia PCs in the past. He goes, what parts would you recommend if I have a lot, I mean a lot of money to blow and I want to build a new meth lab? I'm not sure. Uh, but I don't recommend building a meth lab. That is first off illegal. Second off, it's extremely unhealthy, especially if you breathe in any of those very caustic and toxic fumes. Uh, and third off, I mean, oh, I don't want to spoil it, but okay. Things at some points in the series don't go too well for you, Walter. So uh, maybe you learned your lesson. Maybe you do it the same all over again. I don't know. But, you know, this, this was a big decision and you ruined a lot of things in the process. So a lot of important things in your life to think about next time, if you get that chance, if you do. I see uh, Jared Huddleston said, I was saying Furmark was stable, but PUBG crashed. Uh, I don't even know what that's in context to. I know you asked a question earlier um, about, let me scroll down Yeah, scrolling down. I don't see it. Nope, I don't see it. Um, if, if you get a game crashing, then it just, it just means that you need to fix your frequency or your voltage. You have some sort of instability there. If it's your CPU you're referring to. I don't, you should have given more context because I can't find your, I can't find your, your comment in this uh, slew of questions. I'm glad we have a slew of questions. So thank you for all these questions. I'm trying to get through all of them. I've really tried here. Um, if you look, if you are copying and pasting the same question over and over just to like spam me so that I see it, I will purposefully not answer your question. It just doesn't do anybody else a service. It interferes with my ability to go through questions and to give people equal and proper treatment. Um, so don't spam your questions. I'm going to try to get through as many as I can uh, in these live streams. Just, you know, no one wants to see someone spamming. I'm going to put you in timeout. I will. I put you in timeout, Nan. You see it. You see it. Uh, Bash00 asks, what are your thoughts on crypto? I hate crypto. I think it's a just cesspool of unregulated crap. I've never touched cryptocurrency. I've never mined cryptocurrency. I never will. Uh, straight up. I am Groot Ask Greg, would you consider doing a 360 mil AIO comparison video? It's kind of, I mean, 
in my opinion, they're kind of self-explanatory. They're all going to cool about the same unless they have the you know, upgraded pumps. Most coolers, most AIOs are going to use some derivative of like an Ace Detect pump, which means they're going to cool about the same relative to their radiator size. And ultimately, what the radiator does is just allow you to run your fans at lower RPM because you can displace more air right through a wider surface area. Um, but when it comes to an AIO, just pick the one you think looks the best, you know, and, and if you want a bigger AIO, if you can afford a bigger rad with your AIO, then th then you should know that you're probably going to have a quieter system, again, because you can keep those fan RPMs lower, because uh, you're displacing more air per unit area. Uh, so, anyway. Yeah, Brian, I don't like crypto. Oh, that would have been a good topic, Brian. That would have been a good topic to discuss uh, in our live stream. We'll have to say that for next week. Uh, because, uh, yeah, I've just, you know, crypto, I don't have anything against people who make money crypto mining uh you know if you're gonna mine anything at all just make sure that you go into it expecting i don't know i feel like people go into it expecting to make a ton of money and you can certainly make money doing it it's definitely profitable i mean and brian you proved that i watched your video about how you, you were talking about how much money you made doing it uh and that's cool um but at the same time i, I just don't I don't feel like it's a good idea to use cards that i was sent for free to mine with i i just I've never, I don't know, it just feels a little weird to me. Um, I would never want to go out and buy cards to mine with, so the fact that I could use them for free is just an advantage that I have because I'm in a, a position to, to get free stuff, but I, then at that point, I feel like it's, eh. I, I still feel like it's just a little too, I don't, I don't know. Uh, on top of that, you know, you could lose all your money in a day crypto mining if a currency crashes because people inside trade and everything it's totally unregulated it, it totally is and because of that i i just you know to be honest too like the u.s stock market let's be honest there's a lot of corruption in that too but i feel like there's just so much shady stuff that happens with crypto trading that people don't know about because it's totally unregulated and there's no news coverage on it uh you know the, the public news coverage because it's such like a sh it's just a shady market um i don't, I don't know I, I just don't see the value in it in, in the same way that other people do uh, CJ Airsoft, any tips, advice for a first-time PC build? Uh, yeah, the the backplate, the rear I/O backplate, uh, the you know the rear I/O shield. That's a pain to install. Just make sure you install it properly, and make sure you don't forget to install it, because that's a pain to install once the motherboard's already in there. It's near impossible. So, yeah, that's my that's my tip. <laughs> <laughs> Brian says, okay, I understand. Greg doesn't like money at all. Chromosome 2, Greg is not human. <laughs> oh, we are definitely going to talk about cryptocurrency in our next one. That'll be a really hot topic. Uh, just because I, th I feel like we, we, we think so differently when it comes to cryptocurrency that it'd be really nice to, to finally disagree openly about something in one of our live streams. All right, one more question. I need something good, folks. Give me one more riveting question, and, uh, and then we will call it a day. Give me one more. One more question, folks. I need something good. I need something really juicy. And of course, these are gonna be rolling in kind of delayed, so give me a second to find a good one. Uh, but I need some good questions. So if you have something you've been waiting to ask, ask it right now, and I will find my best to pick a really good question to end this live stream with. So give me the good stuff. Give me the good stuff. Oh yeah, I see it, I see it coming in. Oh yeah. Oh, this is good stuff. You guys saying it. Yeah, Matthew's like, give it to me, Greg. Oh yeah. Let me see, good stuff. Uh, it's a good stuff. Oh yes. All right. Um, hmm, yeah, this is good, this is good. This is good. I'll get to your super chat, that's a separate thing. I'm gonna answer one that's not super chat as well. Uh, okay, okay. Hmm, mm-hmm. I see him, it's good stuff, looking good. Um, hmm, okay, okay. Okay, looking good. All right, here we go. The question I'm gonna answer. Uh, yeah, this is this is a good one. I think it's a good one. All right, Marco asks GTX 1070 or GTX 1070 Ti. The jump between a 1070 and 1070 Ti ain't all it's cracked up to be. It's not this super crazy, you know, just baller upgrade that's gonna yield so many more FPS, right? 
But the question that's worth addressing is whether or not you should choose the 1070 Ti over the 1070. And I think in the current market, there's definitely a place for the 1070 Ti uh, because there's more in supply right now of 1070 Ti's. The 1070 supply equalized with respect to demand a long time ago, back when we were in the middle of cryptocurrency crap. And uh, we, we basically had a much lower supply because prices uh, were not at the the equilibrium price point that we would expect for a, a, a proper supply and demand uh, economy. And I talk about that specifically in another video that you can look at later about why graphics card prices are so high. Anyway, uh, I think that you can find really good prices for 1070 Ti's now because there are so many of them in stock. I can attest to that firsthand. I know this for a fact. Uh, and I know they're given like 20 or $30 Steam keys too, not Steam keys, but like Steam, you know, money, uh, gift cards that you can use in Steam games. So uh, that pretty much narrows it down. I think about 400, 450 bucks for a 1070 Ti, where the 1070, if you can even find one, is going to be priced about the same. So yeah, I think a 1070 Ti right now is a good buy. Maybe not six months from now, but right now it's doing pretty well. And I'm actually going to do a review on one very soon. So you guys, uh, you guys just have that fresh in your mind here. Bachelor, thoughts on Infinity War? Not going to happen. I'm not spoiling it. Pfft. Come on. Okay, scrolling up. Uh, I want to answer the super chat real quick. Zapwood, Beeble Brox, donate another $5 to the super chat. S340 Elite, 1800X, uh, 1080, X370, 16 gigs. What's the next upgrade? Loop case? I don't know. I, it's a pretty good system right now. Um, I would suggest storage maybe you might want to consider storage i'm sure you have an ssd in there uh, if you don't get one if you have an m.2 you're already set um and power supply i'm sure you got a decent enough power supply 600 watts or so would be perfectly fine for that build uh and yeah i think that's where we're going to call it thanks to those who uh who stopped by we have 317 people watching i feel like it's been stuck on 317 for a long time but thank you to those who are i really appreciate that if you are Really upset that I didn't answer your question? Don't worry, we do these every Sunday night, and I believe with Brian from now, we're gonna do these every Saturday night as well. So you get double the after hours from me on my half uh, every Saturday and Sunday night. The Saturday night streams are gonna be a little earlier. The Sunday night streams, which is what you're watching right now, start at 9 p.m.-ish CST. Uh, that could be in the morning for you, wherever you live, especially if you live in like Europe or Asia, uh, but for the States, that is around 9, 10 p.m. If you're on the West Coast, that is 8 p.m. Uh, PST. Thanks, you guys, for watching, and I will catch you all next week. Bring your questions, bring the love, bring the hate, whatever you got, uh, but I, I thank you guys for supporting me and for providing me for uh, providing decent content for the live stream because without your questions, I would just be sitting here in front of the camera looking like a total idiot. All right, guys, I will catch you in the next After Hours. Again, remember, 9 p.m. CST. All right, I'm out now.